Hey everybody, it's Jay Kitchen from jaysbeard.com. I hope you're doing really well tonight. We are doing a remembrance of a gentleman named Larry Collins, who is one half of the duo The Collins Kids, who kind of revolutionized rock and roll music on television in the starting in the 50s up until the early 60s. So this is Larry Collins and his sister doing Great Balls of Fire. Now this kid at the time was probably, he was under 12. You could tell he's very prepubescent looking. So Larry Collins, a prodigious child guitarist who worked with his sister Lori, is the exuberant 1950s rockabilly duo, the Collins Kids, died on January 5th of this year, 2024, in Santa Clarita, California, at age 79. Although they didn't sell millions of records or enjoy widespread radio play, Mr. Collins and his sister were ideally suited to the then-emergent medium of television and became bona fide stars of the early years of live country music TV. As members of the cast of Town Hall Party, a popular TV barn dance hosted by the cowboy singer Tex Ritter in Los Angeles, they brought an untamed proto-punk sensibility to the West Coast country and rockabilly scenes of their day. I mean, look at this kid. Larry was just nine years old and his sister 11 when the siblings, clad in matching Western wear, became regulars on Town Hall Party in early 1954. Two little bundles of bouncing T double N T was how Mr. Ritter introduced them when they took the stage. Laurie stole the hearts of many of the adolescent boys in the audience, but it was often Larry, as the video clips from the era attest, who stole the show. Hopping, bopping, and duck walking around the stage while his sister sang unabashedly of adult situations and emotions. They said I came out of my mama with one leg shaking, Mr. Collins said in a 2018 interview for PleaseKillMe.com, the companion website for a book of the same name about punk music. I had so much energy, they didn't know what to do with me. His hyperkinetic antics and high vocal harmonies animated the duo's performances. Two-minute bursts of swagger and attitude that gave expression to the suggestive likes of Hoy Hoy and Hot Rod, both from 1958. I'm only 14, but I'm going on 15, but I want to be 16 so I can get me a hot rod, Ms. Collins declared as her brother laid down a series of headlong guitar riffs behind her. Mr. Collins played everything from jagged single note sequences to reverb drenched bass string runs on his double neck Moss Wright guitar, a gift from his mentor, the West Coast guitar virtuoso Joe Mathis. Mr. Collins also appeared on Fire on the Strings, an album of instrumentals recorded by Mr. Mathis, who also played double neck moss right for Columbia in 1957. Dick Dale, the man heralded as the king of the surf guitar, cited Mr. Collins' staccato finger picking as a major influence on his playing and on the evolution of surf music. But Mr. Collins' innovations as a guitarist extended beyond surf music and rockabilly, noting similarities between his playing and that heard on touchstone punk recordings by the Sex Pistols and the Ramones. The guitarist Deke Dickerson argued that the Collins' 1958 single, Whistlebait, anticipated punk rock by some two decades. And I'm meeting my brother Larry on Ranch Party. Let's all go. Ranch Party. <laughs> Whistlebait was the first rock and roll record to divorce itself from rhythm and blues or country or jazz or anything. Two little bundles of bouncing T double N T. Larry and Laurie Collins. There you go. It was like nothing that came before it, Mr. Dickinson wrote in a 2018 profile of Mr. Collins on PleaseKillMe.com. Call it pure id, call it free association rockabilly, he went on, but it was just a really weird record. It was the first punk rock record. Rock and roll was what we were doing, Mr. Collins explained in the notes to The Rockinists, a 1997 collection of the siblings' recordings from the 1950s. All the material was high energy. Our approach was always, let's make this a little bit faster. Lawrence Albert Collins was born on October 4th, 1944 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the only son of Lawrence and Hazel Juanita Robinson Collins. His father was a dairy farmer and later a crane operator. His mother was an amateur singer and mandolinist who nurtured her children's talent. Larry and Lori's first break came when she won a talent contest hosted by the steel guitarist Leon McAuliffe at the Tulsa Ballroom in 1950. Mr. McAuliffe also urged the siblings' parents to move from Oklahoma to California to promote their children's musical careers. In February 1954, having relocated to Long Beach, 
California. Larry and Lori auditioned for Town Hall Party and made their first appearance on the show the next night. Two years later, they performed as guests on the first televised broadcast of the Grand Old Opry. They also began releasing incendiary rockabilly recordings for Columbia like Hop, Skip and Jump, and Beetle Bug Bop. But whether they were too country for rock and rollers or too rocking for fans of country, none of them reached the Billboard Hot 100. In 1959, they joined Johnny Cash's touring review. Lori met and eloped with Cash's manager, Stu Carnal, gave birth to two children, and became primarily a stay-at-home mom. Unfortunately, the marriage ended in divorce. The Collins kids officially called it quits in 1965 following an appearance on the pop music TV series Shindig. Mr. Collins pursued a career as a songwriter, finding success as the co-writer of Delta Dawn, a recording by Helen Reddy that became a number one pop hit in 1973, and Tulsa Turnaround, a song popularized by Kenny Rogers. In 1993, Mr. Collins and his sister reunited for an appearance at a rockabilly festival in England. They performed together intermittently after that until Ms. Collins' death in 2018. As a child entertainer, Mr. Collins hardly had an ordinary life, especially when it comes to school, which he did not attend regularly, and to developing relationships with his peers. I practiced a lot, maybe eight hours a day, he told the music historian Colin Escott in an interview for the notes to The Rockinist. But it was a gift, he went on. It was what I was supposed to be doing. I just can't believe I ever had that much energy. I look at those old videos and I say, that kid's gone crazy. May you rest in peace and may your memory be a blessing, Larry Collins, and before that, your sister, Lori Collins. Cheers, everybody.